So over the last couple of videos that I've been doing with respect to working with sidechains, I've noticed something new on the GUI of the plugins that support choosing sidechains in the reverse order. So if we click any plugin, such as the Stock Studio One compressor, and we go to the sidechain sources, this is new to version six. We have the ability to receive from the output of a channel. We didn't have this in version five or before. We had the ability to choose a send, and this would automatically create that send on this track over here. This has created a post fader send, but also we can toggle pre fader and post fader. I'm actually not 100% sure, but I don't think we could do that in version five at all. I think I wanted to, but I don't think it was there. So that is useful. Really quickly, why is that useful? Okay. If we take a look at this, this whole production in context, if we play everything together, and keep in mind, we're working with virtual instruments, not audio, because it's different for audio. If we play the virtual instruments, we're hearing everything exactly as we would expect. Now let's solo the pads. Okay, we lost our side chain. Let's solo them from the console. So why aren't we hearing that? It's pre-fader. Shouldn't we be hearing that? Kind of the way that it works with virtual instruments is that if you wanted to hear the side chain in context, you would have to solo both of these tracks and then turn this down. Now we can hear it and we can remove the kick if we don't want to hear the kick. So this I find to be kind of a, like a little bit, it's a little bit of an annoyance. Now this isn't an issue if you're working with audio, but it is when you're working with virtual instruments. So what I'm going to do in this case is let's open up the compressor over here. And then in this case, I'm actually going to deselect the send. Now, what I want to do in this case, and this might not be for everybody, but if you're working with a virtual instrument and it's not taking a ton of resources, I'm actually going to hold down Alt or Option. If we click, hold and drag and just drag your mouse cursor just towards the bottom of your track in the track header, notice we have duplicate track complete. So I'm going to let go. What this does is this creates a duplicate of this track in its entirety. So not only is it just sharing the same instrument and it's a different event, but this is two different instrument racks, or two different instruments that have been loaded in the actual instrument rack. I'm going to name this kick and we're going to say SC. I'm also going to give this a different color. So we'll go like this. Now, what we can do now is if we click the compressor and we choose here and we go to the output versus the send. Let's take a look at how that affects the workflow in terms of what we're trying to do. Now keep in mind, I'm going to bring this to Unity, this will be at Unity, and let's bring our kick sidechain to Unity. I'm going to solo this, and keep in mind this is routed to the sidechain, so we're not hearing everything, it's not coming to the main outs. Now I'm going to solo the kick track, and we can hear it just as we expect. We have the track plane, we have the channel plane, and now I'm going to solo the pads. Here's the deal. We do have the output of this track sent to the input or the side chain of this compressor plugin, but we're not hearing it yet. Why are we not hearing it? Well, because they need to play together. So in this case, because it's not routing any audio to our main outs, I can simply solo safe this. So if I do this, we're not going to hear that, but now watch what happens if I take this track over here and I solo it. No matter what I do, working with virtual instruments, no matter what I do, this is going to react to the sidechain. Now, keep in mind, this is seeing the output of this actual track as a sidechain input. So if I wanted to increase the amount of the send or back off the amount of the send, I would actually use this fader. But what's nice about this, and the reason that I like this, and I think I'm actually going to start doing this, is because it's a really simple way that gets around the issues of I'm working with just a kick and a bass right now, or rather a kick and pads. But what happens when you have a full production? Drums, percussion, vocals, other instrumentation, stacks, harmonies, you name it. What happens if you need to dial in the relationship of maybe the low end of a bass instrument or some other type of synths or plucks or something, and you want to hear that in relation to the pads? 
but you don't want to render your virtual instrument to audio yet, but you still need to hear everything in relation to each other, and maybe you don't want to hear the kick drum, which might be masking something. You're trying to dial in the relationships between other things. In this case, especially if you want to stay working in virtual instrument, this is a really great way to be able to do that. Now, the way that I would probably do this if I was using this in my workflow, and I am actually going to start using this in my workflow when I want to keep things as a virtual instrument and not render to audio yet, is that once this is set, I don't really need to even look at this anymore because I'll be honest with you, once I set a sidechain send on something, like I have my pads or I have a sub bass or something reacting to the kick, once I dial it in, when I the very first time that I get it going and I dial in my attack, I dial in my release and I set the amount, I don't really usually change that ever again for the rest of the whole entire session or the rest of the mix because I'm mixing into that sound. It becomes kind of baked in and rendered into the sounds. So if that was the case, then I would keep this really simple and I might even actually hide this. I don't need to see it at all, right? So I could just right click and I could hide this track. Now I have my channels and, and my tracks linked. So where is that option over here? Link visibility of track list and console and link expansion and visibility of folder tracks, all of this stuff. I like my tracks and channels to always be the same. So now I don't even have to see the fact that I have this hidden side chain that's happening because it doesn't really matter. It's my pads are going to react to that side chain for the whole entire mix. And I could build another hundred tracks onto this and it doesn't matter because if I needed to solo my kick, it's fine. If I needed to solo the pads, they're reacting to that output. So for that reason, I'm actually going to start using this in my workflow. It's not something that's new. It's been there for a while, but in terms of the ability to add it quickly, I think it's put in a good spot where you can have the decision. And if I was going to make this decision, or if I was going to choose between using a pre-fade or send versus the actual output of an instrument or a track, what I would probably do is if I did want to use this option, then I would, like I said, I would just hold down that modifier key, alter option. I would make a duplicate track complete of either my audio or my virtual instrument. And then I would just come back to the, and I would rename it something where I know what it means. And then I would just come back here and I would choose the output because there's a lot of benefits, especially, especially if you're working with virtual instruments. Anyways, thought that might be useful to some people who like to keep things not rendered to audio right up until the last minute, or maybe even you like to archive things with leaving your virtual instruments in place. So they have a Studio One song that's like two megabytes instead of 500 megabytes, something. Anyways, that's all the time I have available for today. Hope that you enjoyed this content and we'll catch you in the next video. Cheers.